I remember uh, when I was a, a child, just coming aware of uh, the love of God. Uh, I remember when they were preparing us for uh, to go in and do a practice for our first communion. Uh, they told a story of this uh, man who was in the line to get into heaven. And uh, there were all sorts of people in line waiting to go to heaven. And all of a sudden this man gets up to St. Peter and he gives his name and uh, he said, St. Peter says, I'm so sorry, you're just not written in the book of life. And uh, all of a sudden Mary uh, comes and says, St. Peter, let him in. He says, you know, Blessed Mother, you know, says, he's not written in the book of life. I can't let him in. He says, yes, but he prayed the Hail Mary every day of his life. And he said, and he always prayed uh, that I would be there at the hour of his death. And so I'm here and I'm telling you to let him in. And I just remember, even though that story was not necessarily about Jesus, but I just remember that that was one of those moments where it just opened up something for me in terms of my own faith life. Uh, after the death of my mother, uh, my 30-day retreat um, in the Ignatian method. Um, and one of the things that uh, there is lots of wonderful encounters with Christ, uh, just moments of grace that it still feed me, you know, just even the memories of them still feed me. But one of the things is that uh, I was asked to find out what my spiritual name was. I did the meditation and it came kind of out of nowhere, uh, but it was consistent through my life, uh, which was the, the name Firestarter. Um, that, you know, what I, how I see God using me is to try to, to light a fire in other people's hearts. And it really comes out of that very first prayer that I prayed when I was inspired by the priest to think about vocation for the first time. Uh, I said, boy, I would love it if uh, I was able to speak in a way that put other people's hearts on fire the way my heart's on fire right now as this priest is speaking. And I think, you know, there's been confirmation throughout my life that that really is my vocation within the vocation is that I really want people to fall madly in love with Jesus and to uh, share that encounter with, with others so that they, be, they become saints, that I, that I become a saint and inviting them to become a saint. God's love is the first really experience of God that I had and my initial conversion to Christ came when I was just starting college, which is why I love the fact that I'm now entering into a full-time college ministry, because that's where my spiritual journey began. And it began with the very simple revelation that God is love. I mean, I, I was a, a freshman in college, I went to Virginia Tech, and I remember there was a moment where I was alone on a Sunday morning. I had a roommate who was Catholic, and he had gone off to church, and I, being college, I didn't I had not been interested in church at that point. I wasn't interested in religion. I wasn't interested in God, but I was interested in love. And I knew that I needed love. And uh, God hit me. And God gave me a revelation that, that He is love. So God is love. That sort of revelation, that coming to that knowledge, you know, for me, it, I didn't, you know, duh. You know, you're supposed to know that. But I didn't figure it out until I was 20 years old. And that really began my whole spiritual journey. The connection between God and love, that God is love, and therefore I'm love. That's what started me on my quest for God. And I started to devour the Bible. I wanted to know everything about religion and about God and about Jesus at that point. Started studying scripture, seeking out Christian fellowship. And I was baptized you know, about six months to a year later in between my freshman and sophomore year in college, uh, I was baptized in a, in a Baptist church. There's a whole other conversion later to the Catholic faith. Uh, but God is love is the foundational principle for me of my whole spiritual life. That's where it began. And that's where it ends, too, by the way. God is love is the, is the sum and summit of Christ's teaching. I find God to be present in my life in, uh, in probably a number of different ways. Uh, 
Uh, he really had a profound effect on me uh, in the late 1980s, and I have never turned back. I find him uh, in people, I find him in prayer, and sometimes I just find him in, in the simple things of nature. I was really a man with no spirituality, a man who was really uh, uh, at the lowest point in my life with my family. I wasn't a good husband, wasn't a good father. Uh, thanks to a gift that I have in my wife, she gave me uh, a, a cassette to listen to that had religious music on it. I uh, didn't really want to do that, but I did it anyways. And it was a song about Jesus standing at the door. And are you happy with the life you're living right now? Or do you want to turn it over to Jesus? I began to cry in my car on my way to work and decided that my life had to change. The most immediate example right now is, is our, the prison ministry that I'm involved in. And in that, um, we encounter many men uh, in the jail who have either no faith experience or very little faith experience. And maybe it's because they're, they're, they're captured there, if you would, and they sort of have to talk to us if they join our groups. But at the same time, when you start talking to them and you start sharing scripture and you start delving into it, the depth of it, you see these aha moments in their lives. And so I think um, that's what I would encourage people to do. I would, one of the things we talk about in, in the jail experience, many of them are into uh, into working out, keeping physically fit, which is wonderful. But we also tell them, encourage them, the fact that you have to do the same thing with your spiritual life. That your spiritual life needs a workout as well. It's not something you just get and that's it. Uh, we tell them that if you don't work out physically and you sit around eating donuts, nothing's going to help you stay fit. Same thing with your spiritual life. You have to keep it active. You have to encourage it by reading scripture and by praying, pray, by prayer. And those two things we encourage a lot and you can see in them the, the change in their own lives, I, albeit small changes, that in, they, they see that they, there is something that they, they should be thinking about that's deeper. We ask them two questions. Who are you and why are you here? So I ask myself that question. Who am I? Why am I here at this point in time in the world? And why? And, and, and therefore, why am I here? What is my goal in life? And my answer to that is that I'm a child of God and I'm here to do His will. And that that's in a very simple nutshell, it may sound very simple to some people, but to me that captures everything about what I'm trying to do, trying to be.